thanks for your interest in web extract and uh, in this tutorial we're going to walk through the basics of using the application after you log in for the first time you will see a project for you to select and what we're going to do is uh, uh, select a specific project and begin work but the very first thing that you should do is click on script management and make sure that your script is up to date. If it is not up to date, you should install your script and just follow the instructions. It's one click away and the latest script will be installed. So going back to assigned projects, we click on one of the projects that we want to begin work on. You hover over the project and you'll see the work button appear. Just click on that and you'll see that five tasks have been uh, set for you and to begin work on one of the tasks you simply click on work and the first thing you'll notice is the floating palette will appear and this is your main work interface the way this works is that you look at the specific site that's loaded you look for the contact page and you can click on contact here and we begin entering data you can triple click line and it'll select it for you and you simply click on the company name and it adds it automatically do the same thing for address line one add it there the city the state and the zip if there's no country just leave it and if you see several different uh, addresses and you're not sure which one always go for the for the first one that appears on the page but what you really want is the corporate headquarters that's the primary that's the primary uh, address that we're looking for for the phone number just select the corresponding phone number and click that there if this website is an internet service provider a web hosting company or a network service provider click that checkbox but this website is not any of those so we'll just click submit also the uh, the status is good so we'll leave that here and this is important this is a drop down box here and there are several options which we'll get to in a couple of uh, other uh, websites but there's one special option here where if the text is not selectable and it's an image format or on a flash site you click this uh, you click this drop down selection and then you'll be able to manually enter data into each of the fields below it otherwise all of these sections are reasons to skip the site and we'll see a couple of examples I'm sure in a few uh, sites in the future so let's click submit and all of this data will go to uh, the database and we are we see the uh, all of the information here We just scan quickly to make sure that all this looks good and if it does, you mark the task as complete. And we're done with that particular task. And we just go straight to the next one. And let's look here. We look for, again, the Contact Us page. There it is. I don't see an address. Oh, here we, here we go. OK. So here we have the, uh, the company name. Here we have the address, the city, the state, and the zip. Here we also have the country, so we add that as well, and the phone number. It's important to try to select exactly the uh, text that you want. Click Submit. And we mark the task as complete. That's the second one. Now, for slower connections, you have this option of clicking the, uh, the work page here. Actually, let me go back to project. Here's a button that you can click to go back to projects. And what, what you can do here, again, on slower connections, on my MacBook, I can control click and open link 
in a new tab. Do the same thing on the second one, and do the same thing on the third one. Actually, this time I can just click it. So here the pages are loading. We have uh, eggdonation.com, and we're looking for the uh, the primary website. Now here I've got a couple of choices. When I hover over the link, I can see down in this corner here what the link is. And I want to stay on the same page that I originally clicked. So let's click on Egg Donation to see if we, we enter that website. Now we're looking for the contact page again. And here we go. Uh, company name, address, city, state, zip and the phone number. Now this palette floats. Sometimes it's easier to, sometimes you have to move it around uh, closer to where the contact details are and uh, you can position it anywhere you like on the page. Sometimes you have to move it to get access to, to buttons that may be on the upper right hand corner of the screen. So this uh, task is complete and we move on to the next one. Now, here we have, we've already loaded up those pages. So let's go ahead and, and add the, that data. Okay. Now I'm looking for the company name. And very often, if it's not listed on the address section, I can go down to the, um, I can go down to the copyright line and grab it from there. That's generally a good place to get it. There's the city, there's the state, and the zip. Let's also grab the company, uh, the country, and is there a phone number anywhere? Not seeing the phone number. So let's submit that. And we mark the page as complete and go to this one, which is already loaded. Contact us. Okay, now here we have a form. Oh, well, here, okay, oh, that's a, I clicked on a link there. Okay, that's bringing me to Google Maps. I can see down here. That's not where I want to, I want to stay on the website. So I'm, I'm hitting the backspace, or rather the uh, back button, to try to go back to where we were. All right, well, that didn't, that didn't work. Let's see. All right, let's go back to the project. Let's try that again. OK. Now, here's a case where the data is graphical. I cannot select it. Oh, yes, I can. Sometimes by selecting outside of the range, if it's hyperlinked, you can click outside the range and select it. It takes a little practice, but you do get used to it with practice. And this one's being a little tricky because it's selecting more data than I want. Selecting the whole line there. Okay. There's the address. Getting the whole line there. All right, this one is being a bit tricky. It happens sometimes. In a case like that, it's it's acceptable to go down into manual input mode. Now we have to get back to the page. All right, let's try that once again. For this particular, uh, we're going to go into, into manual input mode and enter the uh, city, the state, the zip, country, and let's see if I can select the phone number here. 
There we go. And the phone number and submit. Okay. So we've got that done. Mark the task as complete. And now I've got three pages all showing me the same thing essentially. So what I want to do is close out these other tabs and stick with this one because I've got my five new uh, tasks ready to go. So let's click on the next one. Here's the contact page. Scroll down and see if we can find it. There we go. Company name. Company address. Let's grab the city. State. And the zip. And here's the phone number. Click submit. Mark the task as complete. Click the contact us button. We want the company name. Well, we know it's, uh, it's a law office. go and the that's address line one address line two there's the city it does help to know US geography New York New York and the zip and here is the toll-free phone number and submit Mark the task as complete, and we go to the next one. When you skip a task with one of these reasons, um, then it, it doesn't count as a completed task. You just skip it. So you really do want to try to find as much of the information about the company as you can. There we go. Planned growth. Line one, there's the city, the state abbreviation, and the zip. Here's the phone number. When you're selecting, be careful to select only the text that you want to enter and nothing more. If you're having a, a lot of difficulty selecting, go into uh, flash or graphic mode but only when you're having difficulty selecting the text. It's very important to try to select the text from the website because we record where you found that text. Okay, now here's a case where we got a 404 not found error. Now that's a skip. So in this case, we just select here the error reason for skipping, error 404, page not found, DNS error, etc. Anytime you get an error like that, you use this skipping reason. And you just what happens is it immediately goes to the next job, so you don't lose any time. Okay, that's Oxford University. Contact details. Okay, University of Oxford. in Oxford, England, or United Kingdom. That's the postal code. And the country. Here's the telephone number. There we go. Submit that. And we mark it as complete. And we move on to the next one. Okay, I think we've done enough to show what the uh, what the idea is about here. Let's just uh, conclude with this. If we can find the contact, let's look at about us because I want to contact us 
right away. There's a contact us link. And there's also okay. Well there's a uh Canada. Okay, now notice this says the headquarters. That's what we want. So there's the company name, there's the address, city, Vancouver, BC is the state or province, and here's the Canadian zip, and Canada is the country, and here is a phone number. And we submit. Mark the task as complete. And we're and we're done here. There's a link for training which shows uh, what the various tools look like. Some of these questions have been removed. Um, and here are the uh, the various skipping reasons. Sometimes you'll find uh, a site is parked or under construction, nothing but ads. You want to skip that. If it's a blog, a game, photos, a music site, etc., not a company, you can skip it. If it shows any kind of error, you skip it. If it's a foreign language that you do not understand, you can skip it. If it's a foreign language that you do understand, please proceed to fill in all of the details. If you find that it's a contact form only with no address details at all, you can skip that. Or if it's one of those sites that require a login or password, you can skip it. Or if it's a uh, it's an adult site, you can skip that as well. We're not interested in that. What we're looking for are company websites that uh, we have contact information for. The default status is good, so we leave that alone if it's uh, if it's a good site. And when you click on Flash or Image. You go into manual input mode and that should be used only if the site is an image and you cannot select data with the mouse. So um, I've also explained the uh, multitasking component for slower uh, websites or internet connections and always make sure that your script is up to date and that you have GreaseMonkey installed with Firefox. Those are required softwares for these. Uh, that pretty much covers it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, and we will go for there. We will go from there. Thank you very much for listening.